Okay, recently you might have watched the finals of WTT Almaty where a defender manages to win after a long time and Ruben Filius manages to win 4-3 after being down 0-3 to begin with. And Lin is a pretty strong player and he's beaten many other strong attackers as well. But this is the second time that he has lost to Ruben. In this video, let's take a look at some of the reasons why I think Lin lost to Felix. To begin with, the first point we'd be looking at is Lin's push play. Ball. The, the man new on the scene from China. Insane. As you can see, during multiple instances, Lin is unable to keep his push return or the push in the middle of the rally low. It pops up and Filius is then able to finish it for an easy point. If you've never played against a defender, it might seem counterintuitive. If you mess up, shouldn't the ball go into the net? But if you're facing a lot of heavy backspin and you get the angle wrong even slightly, then the ball does have a tendency to float up or like pop up. Compare this to the way that someone like Fan or Timo plays push against Filus. Gone either way, I mean in some senses, yeah maybe. Oh beautiful block. That last point, you might be thinking, how did Timo get the point with just one attack? But watch carefully how his first push handcuffs Felus and does not let him attack. In fact, even the second push, Felus is ready to twiddle and attack, but he's not able to do that either. And then Timo gets his point with just the first attack. Next, let's look at Lin's backhand block against heavy topspin. Good Phyllis. Look at that for a fall. If you put the finger too high, the finger next to your thumb limits your backhand. It's Dean Roftroff that it didn't take. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Lynn has a bad backhand, but with his elbow always being high, while that, you know, gives him an advantage while doing chiquitas and, you know, just attacking on the fly. But it does not really let you cover the angle you need while blocking the ball. An attacker's topspin will usually have more emphasis on speed than spin. But a defender's topspin will usually have more spin, which Lin has some difficulty blocking. In fact, even when faced with a slow spin from attackers, Lin will make this mistake. In comparison, look at how Timo and Fan manage their blocks. This allows them to alleviate some of the pressure. Felix's disadvantage. Because Fan Shindong now knows what to expect. Next, we come to a somewhat subjective reason, which is Lin's lack of variation and patience. Although Felix goes down 0-3 initially, if you watch the match, you'll observe that even the first three sets were quite close. Lin does really well to demonstrate his power in the beginning, and Felix does commit his fair share of mistakes. Goodness me. No way. Powerful on the forehand. You question it. But 
but as the match progresses, Felix gets a lot better at returning the balls on the table and even gets quite a lot of his shots in. Very hard to maintain it. That is a counter of... And instead of changing his tactics at this point, Lin just doubles down and just tries to overpower him. For example, look at the following sequence of points where Lin tries to power through Felix's forehand fish and ends up making an error. But not Phyllis. Ability. Wow. That forehand fish looks deceptively easy, but it's hard to attack properly unless you're in the right position. Let's look at how Timo and Fan handle it. In defense into attack, and he really has got to look to do that. But how can he turn this into attack? Did you see that? Fan and Timo just keep the ball back on the table if they think they're not really in a position to attack it very well. And I think this also brings us to the second half of how there's variation lacking in Lin's game and he's just trying to attack each and every ball with as much spin and speed as he can. Even when he pushes, it's not because he has the choice and he wants to introduce a little variation. He does not really push until, you know, he has no other resort. And if a defender knows that you won't really push, until you are so out of position that you have no other choice, then it's easy for them to force you to make a push and then attack, right? You're better off introducing a variation while you still have that choice. In fact, let's look at a few points where Timo manages to do this quite deftly and then we'll look at a few points where Lin loses the patience to do this. For Marpazell. Ja, der absolute Angstgegner. Der absolute Albtraum. Ja, ist es schon ein Albtraum, ja. ja. Und auch, sobald man der Ball ein bisschen weniger Schnitt hat, extra parallel mit der Rückhand anfangen. Genau wie jetzt. Also. It's the Salamander. Quite like that, actually. And this backhand. Of course, it took Timo a lot of years of experience to get to that point and I believe Lin will become a more amazing player than he already is in the years to come. Although this was like a video centered around Lin, credit where it's due and although I like to believe that Lin could have won, Ruben Filius played some of the best table tennis I've ever seen and he deserved the win on that day. And that finally brings us to our last reason. And I think this reason is quite important. I almost feel like I'd be doing a huge disservice if I were not to speak about it.